Welcome to the Light of Syria podcast. My name is Dori Fari and I will speak with a realized spiritual master about his views on life and the topic of spirituality. Hazur Maharaj Sanjeev Your nice gurus I bow down to you Hazur Maharaj Hazur Maharaj Sanjeev Your nice gurus I adore you So time goes quick and now we arrived to the third episode of season 5 and then uh, To begin uh, with, I would like to mention that uh, as I closed the previous episode that there was a live satsang on the 11th of September, so if you didn't have the chance to watch it live, you can still uh, look it up on the Sirio Satsang YouTube channel, and if you want to be sure not to miss any satsangs in the future, you can just subscribe and click on the little bell to get the notifications. And as I mentioned many times, then we also have another podcast, which is called Daily Guidance Meditation Podcast, where there is a new episode published every single day in the morning of the European, Central European time zone, so that anybody who would like to, to try meditation uh, under the guidance of Master Siri, you can make your own, begin to make your own experience uh, by listening to this guided meditations and then do your own silent meditations and if you would like to get in touch with us if you have anything to ask or to say you can always contact me at the syriapodcast at gmail.com and I would like to mention again that now as I said time goes quick so soon we are going to be at the intensive autumn meditation and spiritual retreat with Master Sirio so if you have intention come to the San Bani Ashram and make your own personal experience live, first hand then please contact me again at the serial podcast at gmail.com and please note that only those can participate in the program who register beforehand and have a written confirmation from the San Bani Ashram team and after saying all these things then dear master welcome back here with me again thank you And uh, the last episode, uh, we could listen much more in details about how, um, how the creation of the Sun Bani Ashram happened. Well, you didn't really tell about all the details and difficulties, just mentioned some, but you said about this formation of the person and being tested and face difficulties and face oh, um, weaker side let's say, in order to, to, to progress on the path, as you put it. And we also could listen to the details how the program happened in uh, May 1980 with Santa Jayip Singh, with the participation of 120 people, out of which 40 were initiated, and Sanji, how happy he was about the program, and how eventually, after all these lots of difficulties, which you had to face to arrive to this point, It was very beautiful as you described that you came back home after taking him to Rome and how you felt like being in heaven, entering his room and how his presence stayed here with you and how everything changed. And you also mentioned that 
you got married, so big changes in your life. So we are in, uh, where are we, 1980 still, Avi, mm-hmm. when, when you got yes. married. So we are already towards the end of 1980. And you also mentioned that have your life really did change, but you still uh, didn't have a job. But you mentioned that you could renew your license, which you had in Milano, so you could continue that business which you had there it was just shifted to a different place different circumstances different environment everything different but having the running water in the house and no electricity <laughs> for 10 years so please <laughs> continue your story <clears throat> so I would like to say why I decided to get married to this girl from Slovenia who was called Irena Bashel and uh, how it went so we met in Cadorago which was this uh, place where we had a retreat in 1978 she came to attend this retreat somebody gave her my address he was an American boy who had met her in India in uh, Savan Ashram And uh, he kept in touch with her, he kept her informed about everything which happened after Massacre Park. Eventually, he gave her my address as a representative of Santa Jive Singh in Europe. So she contacted me, I invited her to attend this retreat. She came. And uh, that retreat was wonderful. I think it was wonderful because of many reasons, but maybe it was wonderful also because uh, this girl was to be introduced in this, uh, in this our sangat and uh, the method- methodology which we follow, and the grace of the master and experience. What it is, uh, it's a guru power. Well, but then uh, if um, this American boy met her in Seven Ashram, then she met Master Kirpal as well. So was she initiated by Master Kirpal? No, she was not. She met Master Kirpal. I will tell a bit the story how she met Master Kirpal. <coughs> When she was 19 or 18, she met a, a lady in, uh, in uh, Slovenia who was uh, practicing yoga. So she introduced her into practice of yoga. She bought a book and she began practicing yoga. She met a boy also who had been in India. Uh, he, he had been uh, at the ashram of a certain guru called Ananda Murti, which was in Vihar, state of India. And the capital of Vihar is Patna. So he had an ashram in Patna. And uh, so she, she became very enthusiastic about uh, meeting this uh, Ananda Murti. Uh, as described by this boy to her, so she decided to go to to India. Well, a uh, side comment, if you allow me, is uh, that uh, Slovenians, they were a bit more lucky than others, because there also there was the communism, uh, but seems that they, they, they had a little bit more freedom. So then, in other countries, at those times, in the end of 70s, I mean, There began a little bit of freedom for the people, but just to get a passport to travel abroad, that was <laughs> that was a, that was a big thing. It's not that just like you mentioned when you were a boy, and then you went to Amsterdam, you went to India. I mean, to Greece, you could go wherever you wanted, <laughs> and it was not contemplated for for people in other parts of Europe. <laughs> Let's say like this. Yeah, uh, she, uh, yes, Slovenia and uh, Yugoslavia before it was still, at the time Yugoslavia was still, uh, still as a country together and um, there was communism, but they had a bit more freedom. They could take a passport and travel. So she got a passport and she traveled via land to India as I had done the year before. Ah, all along? All along. A, ni- a 19 year old girl <laughs> going to India all alone. You don't find many. And she was very brave, really. So she traveled to Bulgaria and then to Turkey, Iran, Afghanistan, all this trip, you know. And uh, 
she was very lucky she was taken care of really by some someone's visible being uh, because nothing really happened to her um, you know India can be a dangerous place especially for girls we know it very much nowadays but nothing happened to her anyway she went to Patna she didn't meet this Anandamurti because he was he was in jail He was in jail because he was doing also some politic activities against the government of Indira Gandhi, so they put him in jail. And anyway, she didn't meet him, so eventually she traveled through northern India and she ended up in Rishikesh. And during the trip, she met a boy from America, who was a satsangi of Master Kirpal, and he told her, when you go to India, you should go meet Master Kirpal, he's a great man, and... This and that, <clears throat> first time. Then when she was in Rishikesh again, somebody told her, you should go meet Master Kirpal, because he's a great master. And then, uh, eventually, after Rishikesh, she went to Delhi. But I think Master Kirpal at the time was also quite known in Rishikesh as well. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he had some friends there who, whom he regularly visited, and then one of Kendra Ashram which began to take shape at the time. I mean, it not began to take shape, it was, it was. taken shape already. It, it taken shape. And he spent a time there, and he also had his other house in Dehradun at Rajpur Road, so he spent quite some time there. And uh, the Manav Kendra Ashtam is, I mean, in, a, how to say, like, a, in a physical distance, is quite near. And, uh, I mean, traveling in India is not super near, but, I mean, in considering the hugeness of India is... It's, it's near, not far away. Sure, yes. I think it's like one, two hours car drive, <coughs> maybe? It's, uh, it depends. With a good car, nowadays, you can go in an hour. It's maximum 50 kilometers. Mm-hmm. So anyway, yes, Masikipal was uh, visiting Rishikesh reg- enough regularly because he had uh, a f- friend who was a yogi called uh, Raghuvacharya. And uh, sometimes when he was in Dehradun, either Raghuvacharya went to see him in Manav Kendra, but he was very old eventually. He died, he was over a hundred, I think. Oh. And uh, so Masikipa sometimes went to see him in uh, Rishikesh. And Rishikesh is the place where he spent three months in uh, continuous meditation after Baba Saman Singh left the body. So yes, he was connected with this place. But it doesn't mean that everybody knew Masi Kepal in Rishikesh. Not at the yes, least. of course. Not at the least. Well, and already at the time, <coughs> I think there was quite a fluctuation of uh, Westerners. It became like a center. Yeah. And there were, anyway, even at the time, there were so many gurus in India. Yeah. Anyway, she went to Delhi. And there in Delhi, also somebody told her he was a Swami. Uh, with whom she had an interview because she kept looking for a guru, for a path, but she couldn't find the, the right place for her. And uh, they had a philosophical discussion about uh, what he taught and what she taught. And eventually he told her, people like you should go to Kirpatsing. <laughs> so third time, eventually she went to see Masa Kirpal. And she had a wonderful inter- uh, interview with him, <laughs> just the opposite of what I had with him the year before. <laughs> to me, it was very tough sending me away <laughs> with her. He was like a sweet father, asking her, what have you done? Where do you come from? And where have you been? And then, and then, where have you been? And then, again. Oh, so, uh, nice conversation. But, but Irena was so moved by the face of this old man, he was 80 years old at the time, a few months before he died, that as soon as the interview began, she burst into tears and she kept crying through the whole interview. And then eventually he told, he told her, you see, you were traveling in a cycle. I took you out from that cycle and brought you here. So she was very surprised. How can this man say that? He brought me out of this cycle and brought me here. Anyway, she stayed in Seven Ashram. Um, in the evening, 
when she went there and stayed there. Um, in the evening, there was a darshan session with Master Gurpal, and at that time, you know, I had been there just a few months before, so I know very well how it, <clears throat> how it was. Master would say very few, and there was this deep darshan, he looking at the people, the people looking at him, and Irena seeing this sight, she was very, very surprised and very, let's say, spaced out, let's say. So she was wondering, my God, what a situation is this, no? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> was it a little bit scary for her, maybe? Too much, a bit too much, yes. And at some point, Master looked at her and she really felt like, a, like not a man, but a big power looking into her. And uh, so she was kind of uh, saying, I surrender. Okay, you're my guru. No? But when she was, let's say, formulating these thoughts in her mind, Master stopped looking at her and never look back to her through the holy session so she was surprised wow how, how, what does it mean when I was really going to surrender and stop looking at me never look at me again so she was tested well I think uh, she was not meant to take initiation from us at mm-hmm. he was perfect you know we may um and argue about situations it should have been like this should have been like that but everything is perfect the way it happens well we had some episodes about uh, karma free will yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we go back to the to yeah. the good old topic that everything is perfect the way it is the way it is yes so anyway then she stayed there for some three days and eventually she decided this path is too much for me <clears throat> this guru is too much for me what they do here is too much for me <laughs> so I go back home so she bought a ticket and went back to Slovenia but as soon as she reached Slovenia but she did she go back uh, via land or? no no she bought a ticket airplane, airplane ticket oh so she had the money to do it yes so she flew back home and but as soon as she reached back home she was sorry because I had been so stupid I met this great man And I didn't take advantage, I should have taken initiation from him and... uh, So, she wrote a letter to him. Look, I am this girl from Slovenia who came to see you, I would like to be initiated, I'm sorry I behaved so stupidly, and please, would you give me initiation? So at that time, in order to be initiated by Master Kripal, you had to send a format, Mm -hmm. filled up format, and explain who you are, what you have done in your life, and why you want to be initiated, if you are vegetarian, all these things. <clears throat> For doing this, she had to go to a representative of Master Kripal in Europe. And in Slovenia there was none. So she went to Germany. <clears throat> and she met with Bianca Fitting, who was Master Kripal's representative in Germany. But she was very, let's say, complicated person. She really made it complicated. And anyway, eventually, just to meet her, it was very complicated. Eventually they met, and uh, she filled up this format, was sent to Master, but by the time the answer came back, Master had already died. So she couldn't be initiated. She couldn't be initiated because she was supposed to be initiated through me, you see. Then eventually, um, as I said, she came to attend the retreat, where we met the first time. She in, asked for... In, in 78. In 78, in... Uh, North in Italy, near Milan, Como Lake, um, where we had this retreat. She was really overtaken by the, 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 the manifestation of the grace which came over there. She asked for initiation. And next month I went to Vienna for a visit to a friend of mine. He was in a Buddhist meditation retreat and uh, she was initiated on that occasion and in between this what do you mean Buddhist meditation retreat Buddhist meditation retreat center or yes no, ah, like an ashram center. yeah like so Albrecht who was this friend of mine was staying in this place for uh, some few months <laughs> so Irena came there and um, <clears throat> we had a small retreat the three of us I can say me Albrecht and her 
And so one morning I conveyed the initiation to her. So it was still in uh, 78? This was 78, yes, September 78. And in between the retreat, which we had in Cadorago, and this visit to Vienna, I bought the ashram. Uh -huh. I bought this place. So I came here, I bought this place, and I took some slides. So when I went to Vienna, I wanted to show these slides to Albrecht, to my friend. And, uh, but Irena was also there, so she also saw them. It was not in, meant for her, it was meant for him. So when we projected these slides on the wall, at some point there, were a, there was a specific slide in which, uh, or by which, something, something amazing happened. So it was like this, <laughs> how to explain it. It was like my soul and Irena's soul, they joined together and projected themselves on the, on the slides, on the wall. Mm -hmm. And in that moment she said, I feel that this place is going to become my home. Mm -hmm. So it was an amazing experience, really. <coughs> and not it was said in between us as yet, so how could she say that this place will become a home? But because of this experience, she felt, and she rightly felt. So anyway, then uh, we met some few more times, And eventually we understood that we were really meant for each other. That the events of our life, me going to India in 1973, meeting Master Kirpal, she going to India in 1974, meeting Master Kirpal, not taking initiation from him, but then taking from Sanji through me, it was all a, a design, meant. It was a, a plan from high above that We had to come together. So that's why when we understood deeply this, we decided to get married. Well, I was just thinking that uh, when you mentioned how you've tested working hard to welcome Sanji, and then eventually then nice because then you got married, Irina came to live here with you, you got married, there was the retreat, and then you were not alone at this place, and um, the place was already restored, so it was possible to leave them more comfortable. And then you got the license, then eventually you were also rewarded in, not only in your spiritual life, but also in your physical life, in the everyday life. You know, that, I mean, that uh, being a young man, then you got uh, the right wife who had the spiritual inclination, initiated by the same master, met both the same two masters, like you met and loved, and not living here alone anymore. That's nice. So then, Well, you know, after Sanji's program here in 1980, it would have been very difficult for me to continue here all along. I had come to a point in which I needed really a change in life. Otherwise, it would have been very difficult for me to continue living here alone. It's interesting, actually, just uh, listening to you and you mention all these things, which I listen with a great interest, even if... Uh, most of the things I heard, but I always like, love to hear them again and again. But I just can't help thinking that you bought the ashram in 78, just when my brother was born, <laughs> 78 December. And then in 80, Sanji came here just when I was born in 80. <laughs> It's amazing Then you had gone through already so much. And still, here we are sitting at this place and talking together. Very interesting how life unfolds. Yes. <clears throat> This shows that it seems there is free will, but there is no free will whatsoever. Everything is already written, and it happens despite ourselves. So there is a precise design for our life. Hmm. And all the main events, maybe we can decide whether I eat this apple or I don't, whether I take this tea or I don't. But the main events of life, they are predestined and you can't change a dot. Hmm. 
Well, this prologue within me a question which I don't ask now. I am after this um, episode. I am going to write it down to note it for myself because now it's not the questions and answers series, but it's um, really amazing when uh, the divine or the Sadhguru power, the supreme shows proofs and lays down these heavy milestones remarkable milestones on the way, on the path of somebody and how life takes shape and uh, goes on. So and then um, after after your marriage and then you got the license, did you, so did, did you began to work and how, how yes, things I was very Yes, I was very successful. I was working only in the morning, so I would go out, let's say, 7.30 in the morning, I would work up to 12, then... <clears throat> set up back my things in my van. I had this Volkswagen van. <laughs> the legendary. Not the one by which I went to India. It was a much bigger one. Yeah, the new one with the square-shaped lights, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, it was uh, the bigger one. Quite a big one. <clears throat> so I was uh, doing going to these towns around here and selling my things. I had quite a very good choice of items <laughs> and uh, by this I was making money for uh, myself for the family and also financing uh, a few things of the ashram because this ashram is really my creation I mean mostly I bought it because eventually the money which my brother put into it I gave it back to him actually twice because he was a miser <laughs> oh that's another story <laughs> that's another story and uh, <clears throat> <laughs> then in the very beginning I was financing many of the things myself, doing all the work for this place myself, for what is my property in this place, because here there are these two properties, mine and the ashram property. But I was taking care of the whole place myself and many things uh, which were the cost of uh, tools and stuff for the ashram, I bought them myself. So the work I did myself, so my whole life was dedicated to this. So in the morning I was working like this and coming back home, one o'clock, more or less, 1.30 p.m., <clears throat> having lunch, rest a bit, and then doing all the works which were needed to be done here. That's how my life went for so many years. And in the morning, I was getting up three o'clock in the morning, in certain period when, when I was really taken by meditation, two o'clock in the morning, meditating up to seven, seven thirty, and then go to work. That's how my life went for so many years, twenty-five years of my life. That's it. Well, it's also very nice that um, you had a companion in life who didn't impede you to do this lifestyle. And uh, did uh, did uh, Irena meditate with you or? or? Well, mostly, no, no, not really. She did her own meditation. She was more inclined in meditating in the evening. I was more inclined in meditating in the morning. So in the evening, we were meditating together sometimes. But uh, the practice mostly was individual. She was doing hers as she felt, and I was doing mine as I felt. She couldn't meditate as much as I was meditating, and I couldn't pretend that she did. So it was a different approach. She also had her own personal uh, health issues and uh, so she couldn't really keep up the pace with me and I didn't pretend. <clears throat> and the contrary, she never stopped me from doing what I wanted to do and she never stopped me from going to India every year, even if it was a cost for the family. <coughs> but anyway, most of the money I was doing myself. So. But uh, did uh, Irina take part in your work or did she, did she work? Yes, yes, she did. She did. Not... Not as much as I was doing, but she helped. Yes, she did. No, I meant that did she have a job or, or, or no, no. were you the one to maintain everything? No, she never had a job. She always stayed home. That was the agreement between us that I would make the money for the family <coughs> and she would uh, stay home and take care of, of the homeworks. So she never worked. I did. I did work and I made money for the family. And uh, did you ever go together to India to see Sanji? We went in, uh, we went to Bombay in 19, 
82, 83, I don't remember exactly. We went to Rajasthan in 1984 together. And um, I think she never came after this to India. And yes. um, did you ask uh, Sanjay about the marriage beforehand? What he thought about? Hmm. I wrote him. I wrote him, yes. We got involved with each other and we wanted to get married. Yes. He was very supportive of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's nice. And then, um, but also, of course, then Irina maybe couldn't always go to India with you because <clears throat> then um, Nirmala was born, your daughter, in uh, 1981, yeah. December. So, and of yeah, course, she things. had to take care of the girl. <clears throat> and anyway, she didn't feel like going as much as I was going to India. When I came back from India, she really got the grace through me, let us say. Mm-hmm. So, because when you take a trip like this and you go for a retreat like this, the blessing is not just for you. It's also for the other members of the family. And even nowadays, there are satsangis who tell me, um, I didn't come, but she came, or vice versa. But the blessing was for the whole family. Yes, even even for those who are non satsangis. Just uh, recently, I talked to an old friend of mine who participated in the summer retreat, and he, he mentioned that um, <clears throat> he's always so keen to bring Parshad for his companion, because... Uh, He says that even if she's not aware, but I am, and I see how just taking the parshad and receiving the blessings from the master, how her life and how she is changing whenever I come for a retreat. So he said it's very important. Yeah, that's how it works. Okay, so thank you, dear master, for sharing all these uh, very interesting uh, and um, very personal things of your life uh, with us and um, then uh, next episode comes after two weeks and um, so then uh, as I mentioned in the beginning soon we are going to have the autumn retreat so don't miss the chance to have your own personal first hand experience with a great realized master and face him in his living form So that you are welcome to send me a message on, at uh, seriopodcast, uh, no, seriopodcast at gmail.com. And if you're interested in trying meditation, then look up for the Daily Guidance Meditation Podcast. And as I said, next episode comes after two weeks. And now let's enjoy the beautiful mantra sang by Master Sirio. And if you want, just close your eyes and enjoy all these uh, feelings and atmosphere that this beautiful mantra brings along with the mesmerizing voice of Master Sirio, then sometimes uh, I do it like this, that even myself, I, I love to listen to this podcast, even if I'm so involved, I just say, that when it comes out, then the first thing that I open Spotify and I let it play, and I listen to it, and um, when the mantra goes, it's very beautiful if you close your eyes and you feel or the impressions of what the episode left within you, then how it vibrates within you, how this mantra is telling um, about this story more than the words can, then it's really powerful. So <clears throat> I advise you to go to the end of the mantra and get the benefit from it. So thank you, dear master. You're welcome. Hazur Maharaj Sanjeev Your mind's gurus I bow down to you Hazur Maharaj
हजूर महाराज संज